Baruch here with Jen Connect and Kevin Sabet. How are you, Kevin? Good, how are you? Doing well. Thanks. Now, how does the U.S. rank when we look at global marijuana consumption? Well, traditionally, the U.S. has always had higher rates of consumption versus Europe or whatnot, but there are a lot of places in the world that are catching up to the U.S. per capita. Actually, Canada is one of them, um, the, the Netherlands, uh, even in places that we wouldn't think of as being sort of places for overall drug use, like Iran, in terms of per capita, um, is even a, 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 more than the U.S. In fact, today, the U.N. came out with their World Drug Report, where they reported that 5% of the world's population in the last year tried illicit drugs. Now, what's interesting is that we contrast that with alcohol and tobacco, and there's no comparison. Um, our legal drugs like alcohol and tobacco are just used far greater. So when people say, well, what would happen if we legalized more drugs? Well, we sort of have a hint already with alcohol and tobacco. There, there are two perfect examples of uh, addictive drugs. Um, interestingly, nicotine, smoking a cigarette, is not psychoactive. In other words, it doesn't get you high. Um, but it is, of course, very addictive. So. Now, I've heard arguments yeah. that, one, marijuana is not as addictive as something like a cigarette. Mm -hmm. Two, that if we make it legal, we'll, we won't be criminalizing sure. young people right. and we'll allow them to live their lives. Sure. Well, on the first thing, uh, that's true. Marijuana is not as addictive as tobacco. Neither is heroin. I don't think either is a good example. Um, uh, heroin is not. No, not as addictive as tobacco. It's nicotine. We actually know that uh, for uh, cigarettes, it's one in three kids that try cigarettes will become addicted. Interestingly, with heroin, it's about one in four. Now, that isn't, that's not an argument to go use heroin. I wouldn't say that to do that, but I actually think these comparisons that we often use um, are really not that helpful for public policy because it's sort of like saying, you know, my, my headlight is sort of broken, so do I want to fix it or do I want to break my sort of, break my taillight and make that also sort of broken? Why would you want to break your taillight? You want to fix your headlight. So what I would say is we need to actually fix and, and work on our other drug policies, including alcohol and tobacco. Um, but the idea that because alcohol or tobacco is less or more, you could say, more harmful than marijuana, we want to treat marijuana that way, I don't think makes a lot of sense. And why are you so worried about marijuana? The issue is, I, you know, the, the, the issue with legalization right now is that the values of the flower children and the hippies that started this 40 years ago have been quickly replaced by the values of Wall Street. And so the issue is guys that look like us, um, not... Our hey, parents. don't group me yeah, so well, quickly. No, no, I'm, hey, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm saying, you know, that, 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 that are young, and if I can put myself in that category, and have, you know, the MBA from the Ivy League school, um, and uh, are, you know, entrepreneurial, are the ones moving this. And it sort of looks like what happened with Big Tobacco 100 years ago. I only wish that we as Americans had memories that were long enough to remember what this country looked like 150 years ago with regards to tobacco. We're sort of seeing that whole story play out again with marijuana. And when most people think about marijuana, especially our parents' generation, baby boomers, they think of protests in the 60s and the culture wars. Um, that is not what marijuana is about today to the people making money. It's about billions. It's about being the Philip Morris of pot, as they've called themselves openly. So is the solution to regulate the big business or is it to decrease the demand by getting to the young people and discouraging them from wanting to use marijuana in the first place? I think regardless of what policy it is, we want to discourage the use. We want to discourage demand. Um, the adolescent brain is under construction until about age 30. And anything that occurs that's negative, that's why we care about childhood trauma, for example, so much more than adult trauma, actually, because a childhood trauma has the potential to stay with that person for a very long time because your brain is under construction. So anything that comes into contact with your brain, including any kind of psychoactive substance, including marijuana, has the ability to, to stay with you longer than if you tried it later in life. And when we, when we know that when we have addictive industries that rely on addiction for profit, that's how they make money. They have to get lifelong customers. How do you get a lifelong customer? By targeting young people. Find me one addict or alcoholic who started using their substance of choice after age 25. You will not find any. Or you will find the person that was prescribed 100 oxys for their shoulder injury and now used heroin. That's been a recent phenomenon, but certainly throughout the course of recent history, um, this is a pediatric onset type of behavior. And that means businesses have to target young people. That's the only way they're going to make money. I don't want to give people criminal records. The solution to not giving people criminal records, though, isn't legalization. Let's reform those laws. Let's offer economic and, and, and um, job opportunities. Let's go to the uh, you know, communities of color and communities that have been disproportionately affected by just the legal system. And rather than say, well, here's you know, your pot now. You can get it for free and you won't get arrested. Maybe we should start building some schools. Uh, maybe we should start thinking about grocery stores instead of liquor stores in economically deprived neighborhoods. Those are bigger issues that we have to focus on. And I think sometimes too many people 
focus on the drug and legalization and not on these bigger societal wide issues. Very interesting. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. And for more, be sure to check out Gen Connect.